Today on the Hobby Grotto, we're speed painting a Stormcast Eternal. I'm starting with a dry brush of Gehenna's Gold over the whole model. This is going to save us heaps of time because the model is mainly gold and I'm getting this everywhere, I don't discriminate, because we want to paint this fast. And you could just as easily airbrush this gold or, or do a spray, but I just quite like the look of metals dry brushed over black and it's quick anyway. It's quite a heavy dry brush in application because it's a base coat, but we're still getting that nice black undercoat for all the deep shading. It's also good to brace spindly bits of models like the spear when doing stuff like dry brushing because it's quite an aggressive painting technique on you know, fragile details. I've also left the shield off for ease of painting. It will allow me to get behind the shield and also helps when undercoating, you know, just to make sure you're getting nice coverage without a, a big shield blocking your way. Now I'm applying all the other base colors directly over the gold, starting with corn red. And I'm not bothering re-undercoating any of these areas with say black because once all the layers are done at the end, you won't see any of this gold shining through. Always do two coats though with these base layers, particularly when painting over metallic. And I'm going for red because my main inspiration with these models was actually the, the Boris faction in Magic the Gathering. Check out some pictures of them and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That's the theme I'm going for with this mini. I think the combination of red and white mana sources and what they represent is particularly appropriate for, for Stormcast. And I always like to have an inspiration. These Stormcast have also got the heavy Greco-Roman vibe going on, which also works really well with red, but uh, you could just as easily paint this blue or any other color. Now moving on to the white, which I'm base coating with Shabti Bone. This is the secondary color, so I'm painting details and other bits and bobs with this. And all the areas are small, so it's really easy to go straight to the bone rather than building up with some dark colors. I'm also painting the undergarments white. I just felt this fits better with the theme of these kinds of angelic warriors and also goes with the Spartan and Roman look of the red and white robes. It will, however, add a bit more time to painting as opposed to painting them black or, or dark brown, so that's gonna be up to you. As usual with fantasy models, there are some straps and leather that need a bit of rhinox hide, which is my go-to color for things of this nature because it's dark and not distracting from the brighter feature colors. While I've got the Rhinox out, I'm also going to paint the face, uh, but you may very well have helmets on your models and, and that certainly makes it quicker to paint. I just quite like the, the bare heads and I'm going to paint this one in a dark flesh because he's got the dreadlocks happening. Finally, I'm coming through and painting the scale mail and blade silver to break up the gold a little bit. If you want to spend a bit more time on the mini, you could add some more silver to the details and armor and you know just break up the gold a bit further, but um, I keep it fairly minimal, especially when speed painting. Because this model is so predominantly painted in metallics, known oil is going to be a great wash here, uh, also giving us a nice black lining effect. With something like gold, a brown wash can also work nicely, but um, I generally prefer known oil when speed painting because it works well across all colors on the mini, it's just more of a, a one-stop solution. Now that's dry, I'm giving all the gold parts a light dry brush to bring back some of the shine before I paint any of the other colors. And I'm not too phased about getting bits of this dry brush on the other colors because the layers they're all going to be getting will cover any of that up. Remember, the dry brushing is just going to be hitting the raised details, so this will be covered with the subsequent layers and highlights on areas like the red and white, but you still want to, you know, be a bit careful and use a smaller dry brush and, you know, don't want to be too willy-nilly. The red and white details need some layers, starting with a reapplication of corn red, uh, leaving the known oil just in the deepest areas of shading. And for all these layers, I always do two coats and the second layer I start to build up the highlights a bit by applying it, you know, a bit more sparingly than the first layer. All paint is translucent to a degree and especially if it's a nice and watered down, you can always, you know, be building subtle highlights. The Mephiston Red is really going to solidify our color. Again, nice and thin, so we're building up the translucent paint and getting that work from the, the previous layers shining through. You want to definitely treat this like a highlight so we aren't undoing our previous layers. As I mentioned earlier, I was inspired by the red and white of Boris with this color scheme, so 
Although the white details are very small, I want them to be nice and bright for contrast. And I want that purity of white. The first coat of a Shabdi bone is to provide a, a better base. And then we're moving on to a 50-50 mix of white scar and a Shabdi bone. You've always got to be careful with white because it definitely has the potential to be chunky. Like skin paints, I always you know, make sure that I test it thoroughly on the wet palette to minimize the risk of any bumpy paint. The bone as well is going to give a bit more body and tone to the white, so it's great for mixing you know, these kinds of highlights up. These leather bits are very small, but I still like to give them you know, another coat of Rhinox hide, followed by a highlight of Rhinox mixed with a Shabti bone to give the leather a bit more of a faded look. These layers also help to cover up any gold bits still showing, but if you don't highlight belts, I doubt anyone would notice. I'm also bringing back some more shine to the silver bits with some Ironbreaker, and this is you know, just also a convenient stage to make sure that any stray bits of gold are covered up too. I'm painting the head now, so if you have helmets on your models, you don't need to worry about this stage too much, but I thought I'd show it anyway because it's a part of the mini. If you want a more in-depth look at painting dark flesh like this, be sure to check out my tutorial on painting skin. I use the same method there of working up from Rhinox Hide through to Doombull Brown. I actually thought this was the coolest head on the sprues, so I couldn't help myself, but if you're speed painting a group of these minis, having helmets on is really going to save you time. Now this to me is a decent tabletop standard, so you could definitely leave it there, but I'm going to show you a few more optional details just to take it to the next level. I'm buffing up all the armor with a silver and gold mix. This is going to give even more shine to the metal while bringing down the intensity of the gold and making it look a bit more realistic. I'm also using this stage to neaten up any areas that are a bit rough from the dry brushing. This color is perfect for that. After that I'm doing some edge highlights with Ironbreaker. I think silver highlights really complete the look of gold armour and I'm focusing mainly on the sharp edges of the armour plates as well as the rivets. Edge highlights on the red parts can be achieved with Evil Sun Scarlet, or if you want a slightly more faded look, you can mix a bit of white with Mephiston Red. Evil Sun Scarlet has a lot of saturation to it, so I use it very sparingly. I don't want to lose the darker, rich red that's already there. You can edge highlight everything if you want, but um, I just concentrate on key areas to save a bit of time. And then a bit of pure white to edge highlight the final details. I wanted to go white over more of a bone colour to tie in with the, the purity of the Stormcast Eternals, but even when painting a colour white, you still only want to be using it for the final highlights, whether you build up from grey or bone or even blue, that's going to be more about the tone you want for the white. So there we have it, the Stormcast Eternal. The first Stormcast Eternal I've ever painted actually, and now I just want to paint an army of these, maybe even over a weekend. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Hobby Grotto.